Today the NTSB is officially starting our investigation. And we started the day with an organizational meeting. In that meeting we designate parties to the investigation. The NTSB designates as parties to an investigation those organizations that we feel can provide technical expertise to the investigation. And those parties so far are the, the U.S. DOT Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration and the State of New York Public Service Commission as well as Con Edison. We do expect to be adding additional parties in the coming days. We've also, in the organizational meeting, established our investigative working groups and the protocols for how this investigation will be completed. Those investigative groups are integrity management, operations, emergency response, and public awareness. Those are the groups that NTSB has formed to focus on those aspects of this tragic event. I know you all have been camped out here all day in the cold. You've seen aerial footage of the scene. Let me describe to you firsthand what I've seen by being on the accident scene last night and today. And in one word, devastating. You've got basically two five-story buildings that have been reduced to essentially a three-story pile of bricks and twisted metal. I've seen an occasional flare-up of, of fire, and the smell of smoke is omnipresent. All of this underscores that this is an active search and recovery operation. An active search and re recovery operation with first responders carefully removing debris. It's a delicate dance of interagency activity. And we want to recognize the hard efforts of all of the first responders who have been working since early yesterday morning. But because of the nature of the event, because of the nature of the scene, we are not able to get in up close and personal to begin our examination of the pipe. We're not able to do that until the determines that the area is safe. Once we have site access, we will conduct a pressure test of the pipe to determine the leak location. So let me describe to you what, what the pipeline situation is. Running up and down Park Avenue, we've got a distribution line. And coming off of that distribution line, you have service lines going into the respective buildings. The pipe is still intact. Uh, that's unlike other pipeline accidents that I've been to where, where the pipe is thrown out of the crater. This pipe is still in the ground. So there is no obvious to the eye, no apparent leak location. That's what the pressure test will be used for to determine the location of the leak. We have, we have requested from Con Edison critical information about the pipe. Information such as the, the pipe diameter, the age of the pipe, the wall thickness, the operating pressures. We've requested that and we will be receiving it and reviewing it as early as tonight. We will, we're asking for all 311 records to check for any activity that may be related to this event. We'll be looking at all 911 calls, any 811 calls related to, 
related to a potential third-party digging request. We'll be doing interviews, interviews with witnesses, first responders, those who've been affected by this, those who are injured, those who've smelled gas. We will have a progress meeting tonight. The investigation is, our investigators, those four groups are out working as we speak. And they'll wrap up about 6 o'clock this evening. We'll have a progress meeting at 7 o'clock this, this evening where all of those groups come back and report what their activities have been so far. And they will establish the work plan for tomorrow. One of the things we hope to do tonight is coordinate with FDNY to see if we can get a better idea of when we can have site access. Again, it's not safe for our investigators to be there. We're not going to go in until the FDNY has declared it safe. So we, we will coordinate very carefully with them. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. We're just in the very first day of the investigation. As I've mentioned, it is a rescue effort rescue and recovery effort. In the coming days, we will continue working on this. We'll develop a timeline of events. What we're really here to do, we're not here to do any analysis at all. We are here to collect perishable evidence. That information that can go away with the passage of time. That's why we are on scene here in East Harlem. One thing that I intended to say at the very beginning of the, of the investigation is that we have not lost sight of the fact that many people's lives have been affected, many people's lives have been shattered by this tragic event, and we don't take that lightly. Our goal for being here is to find out what happened so that nobody has to go through this again, and that's our commitment find out what happened so we can prevent it from happening again. And our thoughts, our prayers, our condolences sincerely go out to all of those who've been affected. So that's the conclusion of my prepared remarks. In just a moment, I will be glad to answer your questions. But in doing so, I would like to ask that you raise your hand. Uh, once I call on you, identify your name and your affiliation, and we'll be glad to take your questions. Oh, yeah? Thank you very much. Yes, sir, right here. In your experience, does a lack of damage to the pipe supplying in there, in your past experience, has that more often meant that the pipes in the building showed more damage? So the question is, is the, does, in, in our experience, the lack of damage to the pipe, does that indicate where the damage may be? May, may, and it does not, because this is a very low pressure pipe, uh, operating at probably less than one pound per square inch. So the lack of uh, obvious damage does not in any way give us a clue right now as to the uh, location. And that's why we need to do a pressure test. When you say the, the pipe, are you talking about the pipe underneath Park Avenue or the feeder pipe? Okay, which pipe am I talking about? The, 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 the main distribution line running under Park, Park Avenue or the feeder lines, the service line? And we're talking about both. The first thing that we will do is pressure test the main distribution line. That will be first. <laughs> And then after that, if we don't locate the leak location, then we will test each of the service lines. There's a question here. Is it possible that there's a physical leak in the pipe at all that our equipment somewhere inside the building and a stove or something like that? I mean, have you narrowed it down? Have we narrowed it down to be able to say that there was a leak in the pipe and not from another source like a heater or a stove? And no, we have not narrowed that down, uh, but that's we intend to find out precisely where the leak location, where the where the gas originated. That's what we plan to do. The question here. If you haven't been on site yet, then how do you know the feeder pipe into the building is intact? What evidence do you have of that? What evidence do we have that, that it's the feeder pipe? And and we have no evidence of that. No, that right the now. feeder pipe is intact if you haven't seen it yet. Well, what evidence do we have that the pipes are intact, they're not thrown out? Because there, there is a crater there. It's, there is a crater that, that, that has been excavated to find it, but just because you can see the pipe doesn't necessarily show you where the actual rupture, where the actual leak location is. Question here, and then we'll come here. Hey, Bellinger, in New York, once in a while, are we saying this is a natural gas explosion that caused this? Are we saying this was a natural gas explosion? 
this point, we are, we are operating under the assumption at this point that it is a natural gas leak that led to an explosion. That's the assumption we're under, but we are, uh, we are here just to collect information and then we will be doing analysis. And there's a question here. Question is, they're hearing that there is a uh, there was a water main break that may have somehow or another led to this event, and so we we do know that when we arrived yesterday there was a water main break. We don't know if at this point, but we will determine it whether the water main break was a result of the of the explosion or that may have somehow led. To Is the pipe a breach in the pipe? Do you see a damaged pipe? There's more questions about why are we not seeing? Is it unusual that we're not seeing pipe affected? And the answer to that is it's not unusual for a low pressure pipe to be not affected. For a high pressure pipe, which is the type that I've been involved with, the pipe target. Question? Last question. Okay. Yeah, Peter has from the city of Virginia. The fact that the fifty-three line intact. How do you know it was intact, and what is the relevance of that? When I say that the distribution line was intact, what I really mean is is that it was not ejected from from the ground, and there was no obvious puncture or rupture in that pipe. That's what I'm referring to when I say it's intact. Go so out to San Bruno, California, that had a pipeline rupture and explosion a few years ago. There was a 30 foot section of pipe that was thrown out of the ground. We're not dealing with that type of situation. This pipe is still in the ground. So that was the last question. We've got a lot of work to be done, but we did want to update you what we're doing and what we're planning to do. And I would encourage you, we, we will plan to give you updates if we find information. I would encourage you to follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at NTSB, or we will have news releases on our website, www.nt.gov.